Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I am doing a video on the Versace Crystal range of perfumes. I've had a few questions about the difference between some of these in the line, particularly the Crystal Noir. So I'm gonna be explaining the difference between the, all the different six versions of Versace Crystal. If you're new here, then hello, welcome. We're all about perfumes. I have hundreds and hundreds of videos just like this, going through entire ranges. I also have my blog, my website, which goes through in detail and shows you where you can get them as well. And if you're a regular, do check to see if you're subscribed and turn on notifications so you don't miss anything. And don't forget that you've got just a few days, I think, left to pre-order my fragrance through my Kickstarter um, that I'm launching later this year. So the link to that will be in the description along with where you can buy all these different Versace perfumes I talk about for UK, Europe, North America, Australia. Cool, so I think I'm gonna start with my personal favorite which is Bright Crystal. So Bright Crystal, um, they all come with these really large crystal tops, which I think are pretty cool. I think it's a cool bottle considering how affordable these are. The 30 mils you can usually get for maybe like 25 pounds, 28 pounds, something like that. And then the larger sizes you can get pretty good value for money as well. So Bright Crystal Original is an eau de toilette. And personally, I think it's a great alternative to Misty or Blooming Bouquet because they both focus on a very clean peony note. And then Bright Crystal also has a great lotus note. So lotus flower. So it's very airy, very clean, very refreshing. And then the peony is floral, but in a very clean, refreshing way. And when you first spray it, you get um, a top note with some yuzu in, which is kind of like a lemon, and some pomegranate, so slightly fruity. But I would describe this as a clean floral. And, you know, for the price, if you like Misty or Blooming Bouquet, I think you'll like this. It's very similar, it's just more lotusy. it doesn't have the rose in as Blooming Bouquet does, but they're both all about peony, and I think it's a great alternative. I think it's good for humid weather because it's very clean feeling. If you want something floral, but still very clean, and I think it's great sort of spring, summer, fresh, yeah, clean perfume. It then also comes in an absolute version, which I have here in this really cute mini. You can get a little set of the minis. I'll leave the link down below. The absolute version comes in this darker pink bottle. And this is pretty much the same, um, but stronger. And there's a hint of raspberry added as well. So it's a little bit more fruitier, but it still has that watery lotus and the peony as the main note. Um, and of course it's an eau de parfum. So I would personally recommend this because it's stronger, it's great for lasting. I prefer the hot pink bottle, but the eau de toilette version is good. It's not like one of these lame eau de toilettes that lasts like half an hour. It is a good fragrance and it's much more widely available. You can usually find the absolute version for maybe like five pounds more than its equivalent size of the eau de toilette. And I do think it is worth those extra few pounds or dollars, um, but it's not the end of the world if you, if you get the Eau de Toilette at all. So those are the bright crystal pink ones. So next we have Yellow Diamond. So the original Yellow Diamond, which I also have in a mini here, is a floral citrus. So it has a lot of mimosa in, as well as water lily, freesia, African orange flower. So it's white floral, but it has quite a green feel to the floralness. Mimosa really reminds me of like being outdoors in the countryside. It has a kind of grassy green leaf feel to it, almost like an ivy, and um, with all those white florals. And then the top note is a lemon, very refreshing. Bergamot, you also get some neroli as well. So again, this is very much like spring, summer, refreshing, floral with a citrus kick. And then this comes in an intense version. So this is called Yellow Diamond Intense. And again, the bottle is like a darker yellow. For the intense one, the packaging is totally different as well. So that's the yellow diamond packaging, the yellow, and then the intense version comes in this blue packaging with this sort of Versace pattern on. So it's, it's much easier to not get them mixed up. The bright crystal one is just like a darker pink bottle. 
and packaging. So the intense one, I actually prefer this version because it doesn't have the mimosa in. And I personally always find mimosa just a little bit too green, um, a little bit too like Angelica. Whereas the intense one is more orange blossom, freesia, um, and it has some jasmine and osmanthus in, which are slightly stronger white floral notes. It's an eau de parfum rather than eau de toilette, so it's it's just a stronger perfume in general. So again, I do recommend the intense version. It's very refreshing. I think the citron, citrus top note really comes through in this, and the, the floral notes don't distract from it, so it does almost feel more like a citrus and then a floral, whereas the eau de toilette feels more like a green floral and then a citrus. So I find, find this one more refreshing. And again, this would be great if you like your citrusy scents for more humid weathers, like your Dolce & Gabbana light blue. Um, but this is definitely better for lasting than light blue eau de toilette. So the third perfume from them is Versace Crystal Noir. Now, this one is probably the most popular. It has a bit of a cult following. And it comes in an eau de parfum and an eau de toilette version. But as you can see, they look exactly the same. And the packaging is exactly the same. It's just one says eau de toilette, one says eau de parfum. So I think people buying this for gifts or just picking it up off the shelf, very easy to get the wrong one and they are different. And I think that's where some of the confusion comes in. So the eau de parfum is really the one I think that has the big sort of cult following. Um, it's a really amazing for lasting perfume. I was wearing this yesterday and I could not get away from the smell. It really was there all day. So it has a coconut in the base, um, which really helps it last. And then it's a very ambery, slightly spicy fragrance. We get a good amount of cardamom, pepper. There's even a ginger top note. Um, and then some white florals like orange blossom. So it is feminine, but it does have that cardamom kick and that ginger kick as well. And of course that warm coconut underneath that's very ambery. It's not a sweet coconut at all, but it is great for lasting. If you like fragrances like Dior Poison, you know, these strong oriental scents, I think this is a great affordable option. Um, and if you do like the coconut scents, but you don't want them to be a sweet coconut, this is also good and it really is good for lasting. I would say that this is more an evening perfume or during the day in the autumn winter, um, but really cannot rate this enough for its lasting power and projection and everything really. So the Eau de Toilette, which looks <laughs> exactly the same, is obviously lighter. And the key difference here is it doesn't have that coconut in, it doesn't have cardamom in, doesn't have pepper, it's not spicy, it's really quite a different scent. So it's probably kind of like a woody violet. It has a feminine violet note in, a bit of fig and black currant. And then it has like this woody, vanilla-y cashmere, and then the white floral heart. So it's definitely more wearable, like more, I guess, more generic, more simple. It's like a fruity, woody floral, um, but it doesn't have that intensity or the lasting power of the Eau de Parfum. And I definitely think people have bought this thinking it's the same scent as the Eau de Parfum and then being dis disappointed. And I've had a few messages from people saying, has it been reformulated? Have they changed? Um, Crystal Noir and I think it's just that you've got the Eau de Toilette rather than the Eau de Parfum so do watch out for that and um, if you do like your more woody um, violety scents then this one could be good for you it does still have an ambery undertone it does still have the DNA of the Eau de Parfum but without any of the spicy cardamom added um, instead it's got the more violet a bit more feminine but it is still quite a dark moody evening perfume so there are often lots of gift sets especially around christmas for versace crystal which usually contain free products like the same price as just buying the perfume on their own so i think they're good value i think it's a really underrated range like the bottles are cool the scents in the eau de parfums are great for lasting um but you know it's not really advertised or talked about much which is a shame so they are a little bit of a hidden gem especially that crystal noir if you love those deeper spicier scents and the bright crystal for all that lotus there's not many fragrances like that that have so much lotus and very clean 
So yeah, so I really rate them. They're definitely a Sophie approved perfume range and I wish they'd bring out more actually. I'd love to see a purple one maybe. So yeah, guys, let me know what you think of these. Have you tried any of them? Which is your favorite? Um, let me know in the comments. I do read all your comments. And in the description box will be where you can buy them all. But that's it, guys. So thank you so much for watching, as always. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.